All right, so you want to train your dog and stop them from tearing the house apart when you're out running your errands. Well, we have the fairy dog mother here, Lauren Ativo, and she's going to teach us how to crate train our dogs. Some people feel very, you know, adamant about, no, this is bad, we're putting them in a crate and whatnot, but there's a right way to do this. Right? I know, it's, it's very true. I mean, in fact, I'm guilty of it. When I first got my very first dog, Preston, I thought, oh, it's a cage, it's horrible, and, you know, you look at it as a jail cell, a place where your dog is confined, when in actuality, dogs look at it as their safe haven. It's a special den and so you want to create a place in your home environment where your dog feels comfortable to take a nap, to chew, to stay out of trouble and this is one of the best things you can do for your dog is get them comfortable with being in a crate because if you travel, say you take them on an airplane, you take them to a friend's house, a hotel room, if they feel like they have this safe, comfortable place, you can take them anywhere with you. So this is a really great tool for people who want to integrate their dogs into other parts of their life. Is that the so. philosophy behind crate? training is that they're comfortable in it? It's a huge part of it. Yeah, I mean a lot of people look at crate training as something that you would do for housebreaking and mm -hmm. it's a really good tool when you're potty training a dog. But beyond that, it's a great I know you want to all these toys up here. <laughs> a lot of people put their dogs in crates and leave them in there for such a long time. I mean, don't they get like confined and sad and and I just think it's so cruel. It's so cruel. Well, see, that's the misconception. Okay. There's a lot of people who misuse crates, and you can't look at a crate as a form of punishment. We need to look at the crate as a wonderful place where you're encouraging dogs to go in it, and you make it a game. You make it a happy place where they're going to get attention, they're going to get, get food, there. treats, toys to play with, and you can't use the crate as an excuse for training and exercise. A lot of people, they see a crate as, oh, it's a free babysitter. I'm just going to throw my dog in the crate for yeah. eight hours while I go to work. And you can't do that. You have to make sure that your dog is getting proper socialization and proper exercise throughout the day so that the crate is only used when needed. When we so. get it, you know, when I was younger, it'd be sent off to your room and you sort of feel bad. It's like, send the dog to the crate, but they actually enjoy this. Parents send you to they, a crate. They, they, they send you to, <laughs> they send you to see, a crate. See, now that explains a lot, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. You're putting it together now, aren't you? See, yes. now you'll know me. Okay. Uh, the kind of crates that we're dealing with here. I see there's some different ones. We've got yes. three different crates here. There's so many different types of crates on the market, but your general varieties are, you have your wire crate, which mm -hmm. is really great if you have a new puppy or a rescue dog because they can't chew through it. Here we have a plastic crate, which which is really good for traveling um, mm -hmm. if you're taking your dog in the car on an airplane. And then finally, we have a lovely mesh crate. Which oh, is oh, oh, there it is. Which I heard is a That's magical a word. Blue word, mesh. You've got them mesh. both. Make sure you enter to uh, our 4 off on Jet vacation getaway. Okay. And mesh crates are great. If you're traveling and you have a dog that is crate trained, that doesn't have any behavioral, ish behavioral issues, who's not going to chew through it, this is a great option because it's light. And as you can see, Penelope here, I know you're so excited. She's My like, dog would I'm ready to yeah. go in it, Mom. She loves it. She, re she really wants to go hang out in her crate. So what's in there? But that's the, what's in yeah. there? Yeah, see, but, so, uh, for, let me show you. Where, oh, let me show I, you. So let me let me demonstrate with Penelope. Okay. You have a dog who already knows Penelope. We call it a trailer in our house because we do a little trailer? bit of media work. Ah. <laughs> so Miss P, ready? Go to your trailer. Go go go! Yay! And so she sees this as a happy place. And here I am throwing a couple treats in here to make her comfortable. And we will. So should you put toys in there for them? Their favorite toys. You definitely should. Over here, I have some really great options in my little magical basket. So, but you know yeah. what? When we come back, when we return, we're going to show exactly how you can crate train your puppy or your dog, along with some of the wonderful some of the great play, options to keep our little toys that you brought Good. for them. Perfect. Let's play. Yay! We are back with Lauren Nativo. We're talking about crate training, and we left off finding out a few things we can put in the crate to, that can get us on our way to training. Indeed. Uh, a crate is a great place to give your dog their daily meal, to make it interactive. You can give them something that's like this little kibble nibble and put their daily allowance to keep them mentally stimulated. You can also use all sorts of different toys. The thing to keep in mind, though, is that Penelope here, I'm going to give her this little busy buddy toy. She's a dog who's already acclimated to being in a crate and she's comfortable. That's why she's okay in the mesh crate. If you have a new puppy or a rescue dog that has any type of behavioral issues that likes to chew a lot, you always want to make sure to monitor what your dog is doing in the crate and not leave them unattended because some dogs with separation anxiety, they can chew on things and 
I did that you once with my careful. dog, and they had separation anxiety. She actually got her nose caught in the oh. wire mesh. I had to rush her to the emergency so they could take pliers to take oh it. Oh her nose gosh. was completely. Dude, I know. I felt so, so bad. Sad. Yeah. The, yeah. There's you don't know those things, you know. And, and that's the thing is, I mean, I encourage everyone to go to our website because there's so much to cover in this short amount of time. But you also want to think about taking your dog's collar off and different things to keep them safe within their crib. <laughs> oh. the, yeah. Watch dog. Right. Watch dog. She's like, that's yeah. right. Go to our website. Is, <laughs> is there a crate size that's <laughs> appropriate? Right? Yes. The pool man's here. Oh, the pool man. She yeah. does not like Ginger is not, not like digging the pool, the pool man. Yeah. He cannot take her home. <laughs> so crate size is very important. You want to make sure that your crate is just large enough for your dog to be able to stand up, turn around completely, and lay down. That's if right. it's too right. big right. and your dog's not potty trained, good guard. I dog. know we have some tough little rescues here, yeah. huh? Um, if the crate is too big, they might soil one area and then curl up on the other side. So you really want to make sure that the crate is just big enough for them to take a nice nap. And if you have a puppy, for example, that you know is going to grow into a full-size dog, you can get a bigger crate and then put a crate divider in it to make sure that their space is more contained. How do we get the dog to go in the crate? Yes. Do we crawl in there Great first? Great question. <laughs> you crawl in and have the dog. Oh, oh, go, go ahead, Mark. No, come on over here. Yeah. Okay. So this is Sadie. Hi, Sadie. Sadie is a seven-year-old. Uh, she's got diabetes. She's a oh. little rescue from Marley's Mutt. She's so sweet. Oh, she and so we're going to just lure her with the food, and we're going to kind of gently toss it in. There you go. Good girl. Now, you wouldn't Very slam the door good, on Sadie. her, would you? No, you never want to slam the door okay. on a dog in the crate. You always want to make this a happy, positive experience. So I'm going to throw her food in here and if she wants to play with that she can um, in the very beginning crate training is something that can take a long time you want to do it in stages so in the very beginning you know you can put the food in and then sit outside for 10 minutes then come back always make sure to come back to your dog when they're quiet and resting nicely if they're barking they're whining chewing you never want to give them attention when they're acting out so that way you teach them to have good behavior within their crate <laughs> She's protecting. Now is she yeah. protecting her area in there? So because she's growling at her. Yeah, yeah. she's she's kind of looking at Penelope because Penelope has a bone in here. Right. So you've got to be careful when you have different dogs. Right. They kind of can resource guard their favorite toys and bones. Now oh, so this one. Give it, this is a special crate. Right? Let me see if I could get her. So now what you want to do is take <laughs> take the food. This is Ginger. Be careful. Ginger has a broken leg. Oh, Ginger, be careful. Here, Ginger, here. So if you take the treat and put it at the very front of the crate, you can start out gradually just putting it in the front of the crate, allow the dog to be curious and to just kind of go in and explore. And then as time goes on, you can put the food more towards the back of the crate so your dog realizes like, hey, maybe there's something cool back there. And another good thing to keep in mind is when you're crate training a new dog, see how we just have the door open? Mm -hmm. We can allow her to go in and out of the crate. If She's chewing, she's chewing well, she's the wire. To find there's a little snack oh, here, underneath there. That instead. there I'll give you that instead. There you go. <laughs> so if you have a crate at home, you can keep the door open and then hide little toys, hide treats within there so that your dog can kind of go explore throughout the day and see it as a magical, happy place where good things yeah. happen. It's never a place of punishment. So if there's one takeaway, it's this should always be, be a, safe a happy haven for them. safe haven for Thank your dogs. Thank you so much, Laura. Where can I put your crate? If you <laughs> want to hear where you hold that, by the way, if you're interested in adopting Ginger or Sadie, you can go to marleysmutt.com. It's a wonderful site. Uh, you can check it out. Or go to our, our, our home and family website as well. Wait, uh, coming up, Kevin Cronin singing, and it's another REO <laughs> Speedwagon. And favorites when we come back. There you go. Okay.